Welcome back to another episode of On the Subject. I'm your host, co-founder and CEO, Michael Villardo. We are so excited. We have an extremely special guest here today. We have a star actress from the show Vikings, amongst other shows Stop like it. Louder Milk and Half Sisters. Go check it out tomorrow. Please don't. And then we also have an accent aficionado and a true <laughs> Canadian soul, <laughs> Christy Dawn about. Dinsmore. Welcome to the show today. <laughs> thank you. You're so cute. Yeah, no, thank you for joining us. We're really excited. And so... We know you're such a world traveler. You're from Canada. You live in LA, and then you spend a lot of time in Germany. Mm-hmm. Welcome home. What are you doing this summer? What are you looking forward to in LA? Oh, um, we're well. We just moved to our apartment, so I'm just kind of you know relaxing into that, and um, I'm going to Burning Man. <laughs> I saw that. So we did see that on the IG story the other day. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So Christy the burner now. So I know. tell us about that. Have you ever been to any festivals? You've been to Coachella, Lollapalooza. Hey, I, I did go to Coachella. And what year? Kind of, oh man, I think it was 20. Who were the headliners? You 50? might remember that better. No, I have no idea. <laughs> no, I try to pretend that I'm like this festival girl, but I, I, I said I'm not going to be a festival person until I go to Burning Man. Okay. So once I come home, I'll be like, you so know. what's your camp? What's the name? The camp is Venice Red Light. Okay, that's very <laughs> on brand. You love Venice. Two thirty and C, find me. Two thirty and C, find her. But it is actually like a full, like I had no idea what I was getting oh, myself what, into. What, yeah, what are you going to provide for the community? What's your role? So one main thing is it's really dark there, so I have reflective star stickers for, to give to people. Oh, that's so sweet. And you. I also bought a brought. Sorry, brought these. Um, see, Canadian. Sorry. Yeah, I was. Uh, sorry. These cute cards. That's like, what are you grateful for? Oh, and like, so I'm gonna like pass cards around and be like, just simmer into that, and you know, listen to yourself. How many days are you going? I'm going for the full thing. Wow, you are diving in with both feet right away. <laughs> yeah. So how did you decide this is something you wanted to do? Are you going with your partner? Or yeah. Are we allowed to announce the power partner? Yeah, the we can, yeah. Okay, what's, yeah. what's new? Zurin, Zurin, my partner. Um, well, he's gone 11 times, so I'm going oh, with... Oh, okay, so you're yeah, going, I'm with, going the, with the pro. You're going with the pro, so yeah. you'll be in for a trip. And I'm like fully stocked. Like I have 30 pairs of socks ready to go. I like, you know, we have all the costumes. That's like the yeah. best part oh, about it's it. Oh, so much fun. I've You're been bringing bejeweling. a bike? Yeah, I got an e-bike. Like, I'm yeah. I'm set. But it is like, like I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be like a good thing for me at the end of summer. Like kind of like, you know, conclude my summer with. And I'm going there to maybe like manifest and um, zen out more so than party. Yeah, so. no, I, I, I think that zenning out is a great feeling, yeah. especially when you really are passionate about someone like your partner or passionate about a craft like you are with acting, zenning out can give you another perspective. And so when you talk about that, you've always been so passionate about spirituality, astrology, you know, how did you get this passion? You've always, at least since I've met you, which yeah. Christy and I met in the fall of 2019. So we go back a little bit of ways now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what made you fall in love with like the creative soul? I think I've always been a super curious cat. Love cats. I love cats. Do you have a cat? Too? No, I, just my oh, dog. You gotta get a cat. Yeah, you guys love yeah. a cat. Loyalty. Um. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Like I was. I think it has to do with having a loss as a child. I think that's where it stems back to. And then just being curious in personal development, like you know, chicken soup for the teenage soul. That was like one of the first things that's that I. That's a good book. I, yeah, I really got into them when I was growing up, and um, I think they helped give me perspective, and I was always kind of like a little stargazer. I still am. So, I, you know, like looking out the window and being like, who am I? What is this world? And where do I belong and fit in? And I think that my dad, like my father is really like that. We had a lot of discussions growing up, and then, you know, I just, for some reason, that just like fed me and like satisfied me growing up, and then it just kind of, you know, boomed from there I guess and I just like I love psychology yes. I love all those things I love manifestation because it's worked for me and manifesting so, is real I think that's yeah. something I love chatting about especially people who are so accomplished and talented in fields that aren't the normal nine to five and mm-hmm. so your acting career is tremendous and you're so grateful to get to know you Thanks. the big piece there I always wonder is you are so passionate about acting and spirituality were you as passionate about school? And if not, mm-hmm. how do we get more fun in the school where you fall in love with learning? Because you clearly yeah. are very, you're a curious cat. Yeah. You love learning, extremely yeah. articulate, yeah. but school may have not spoken to you. Yeah. School was kind of a mixed bag for me. 
What part did you hate the most about school? The social aspect. Really? Wow, yeah. I'm surprised. I thought yeah, that would have been your favorite. I know. Why, what you did you not like would've... about that? Yeah. Well, I was bullied. So what? Oh my, I'm yeah. so sorry. How old were you? <laughs> I started getting bullied in middle school, and then it continued into high school. My parents used to say to me, "You give yourself away too much. Like you say too much about yourself, and you're too good of a friend, so people walk all over you," kind of thing. So I like begged to be homeschooled, actually. Um, Homeschool is getting more and more popular by the day, yeah, and yeah. the flexibility is extremely valued. And, and that's kind of what we talk about a lot is, you know, there's not one size fit all approach in school, and we just yeah. want everyone to be able to find the best version of themselves. Yeah, totally. Curious, was it more girls or boys picking on you? Oh, man, it was both. Wow, yeah, really? Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so like what changed? How did it stop? Um, I, well, I kind of beat the bully up at school. Wow, okay. You heard it there first. So like, how, yeah, a, can you bring us back I to the scene? What happened? Yes, so you like, know hockey, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. in Canada, we kind of duke it out and then you walk away. And, and you know, I'm not so like, advising did you teenagers to do or what this. did you do? Oh, yeah. Like, I went to, t I blacked out. <laughs> and, you know, my, my grandmother was in the hospital. And I, you know, my parents picked me up. I was still like, you know, adrenaline rushed. I had like, a scratch in my eye. And I was like, you know, and um, she's like, what happened to you? Like my grandmother. And she's like, good. Like, I'm, I'm happy for you. And my parents applauded me too because enough was enough. And I kind of, you know, but I'm not saying that's like a violence is the answer. I think there's like, a, you have to stick up for yourself and you have to know your self-worth. And it was kind of all encompassing that whole scenario. But everybody left me alone after that. Yeah, I know. Right? I think I, I love how I she said. Some respect. She said it best. You know, she <laughs> had a formidable experience through it. Violence is not the answer. We're not going <laughs> yeah. at all. But I no do violence. think, and that's yeah. something that I, you know, yeah. um, excited with my kids is not the violence part. Don't clip that up. Is I do <laughs> think there's super uh, there's a lot of value in contact sports. Yeah, it's a controlled yeah. place with controlled violence yeah. that. Yeah. You can learn so much from lacrosse, hockey, football. Mm -hmm. Those are sports that I really, really want my children to get to play because yeah. I think that one, the sport tangle, and two, as a youth, it's something that you could do. You you can, but I don't really advise. Like as an adult playing physical sports, like getting hurt is too valuable for work. Yeah. But as a 10, 11 year old kid, being out there in the world and being able to have some critique. Actually, I actually have a question. Did you play <laughs> women's hockey? No, because no. my dad thought that I was going to beat everybody. <laughs> Did you figure skate? I did. And I, nice. I have hockey skates and figure skates. And like most of the time when the pond's yeah. frozen over, we've, you know, we've no, gone I love out. It. You and my brother play. and I like, yeah. duke it out, you know. And How many siblings do you have? I have my brother who just got married. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Arwen and or what's, what's his name? Sean. Sean. Sean, yeah. And then uh, David. Who, yeah. I don't know where Close. that came from. <laughs> Close. <laughs> and then my stepbrother, David, who's David. four years younger than me. Yeah. Where do they yeah. both live? Canada still? Yeah, they do. They both. Yeah. So why yeah. do you live in L.A.? Is it really just for your career? If you if you weren't, if you, if money was not an issue and you didn't have to act for money and you could act at anywhere in the world. Oh. Would you live in Western Canada? Is it really just career bringing here, or do you really love the city? That's kind of tricky now that I'm 35. Wow, we didn't have but... to aid you on the pod, but <laughs> yeah. shout out Christy. Right out here, yeah. You're getting younger getting with Getting grays. Yeah. There's a lot of gray hair I coming have in. quite a bit. Don't yeah. worry, this I'm is like a startup grind. I'm trying to pluck them every day. But, um, yeah, I'm asking myself this question, because I do really love where my parents live. It's wine country. Where is it, Kelowna? It's it's near Kelowna. It's yeah, Penticton. Cool. Oh, Penticton's amazing. Yeah, you go play amazing. at Penticton V's Junior well, that's, A. Yeah. Did you go to the hockey? I <laughs> would have I wanted yeah. to play there. It's a good team. BCHO. Uh, yeah, Sidecar, there's a huge hockey uh, academy up there, and a lot of people go up Oh, there. we need to get them on subject. Yeah. We're yeah, all we about should. hockey academy. We've yeah. actually bring a lot on lately. Yeah. Sports academies um, are a perfect fit for us. If I could remember the name. So you were thinking about... You so, so if you could live in, well, but isn't there a lot of acting up there? No, isn't there a lot there of the films are shot up been, there? Yeah, in Vancouver, there, it's Hollywood North, and yep. I think I just outgrew Vancouver. And to be honest, like why I love LA so much is because I've always kind of felt like the black sheep. So coming here and having a community and like you know not feeling out of place, like I felt like I actually found my people. Like I found you guys. Yeah, yeah. Wait. <laughs> No, like, I think really that's friends, so true. You know? Yeah, you know, being in LA, <laughs> yeah. New York, these cities, yeah. these they're so places. massive. There's so much diversity, and that's mm -hmm. just not ethnic diversity. It's also career diversity and yeah. thought diversity. And then also, uh, you know, depending on how you're hanging out in the city, 
If you and someone have a falling out, you're probably not going to run into them every day, which is a benefit (laughs) as well. Being in a larger city that you can experiment and take risks like, hey, I want to be a better version of myself. Yeah. But when you're in your hometown, you're not able to escape that. Did you feel like that as a child at all? Yeah, I did. I, I didn't. Where did you grow up? Where was your high school? Let's give a oh, shout out. Ter- Terry Fox Secondary. What? Oh, isn't that the guy who like had the ran legendary across, ran across the yeah. country with the yeah. leg injury? Yeah. Wow. Legendary school. So Terry Fox, yes. shout out, Canadian legend. Yeah. Was he doing a marathon every day or something? He ran across Canada for cancer after his leg was amputated. So he basically. Unbelievable. Did One yeah. leg. And they do a run every year for him, I think on September 9th or 7th. Okay. It's yeah. coming up. Around there, yeah. Virgo season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what uh, What was the specific town that the high school was in? in Port Coquitlam. I don't know how to say that, but let's They're all Indian names, all native Indian. I love it. Beautiful. Yeah, because it's Canada. I love that. Yeah, part. I do love that yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so growing up there, then you moved to Vancouver after? I slowly started going south. That's okay. what I've always done. Like it was like the next town. And then now I got it, yep. you know, North Vancouver, then Vancouver. Then I kept going down, down, you know, and now I'm in L.A. And the dream was to always, always, always be in L.A. Yeah, and the manifestation amazing. part about it was that it was like all over my whiteboards. And like, you know, I, I love vision boards. I love journaling um, and all that stuff. But I always knew that I would be in L.A. How old were you when you started manifesting this? Um, I started manifesting you know, and I, it, a lot of credit has to go to my stepmom because she used to take me to these courses and stuff when I was younger. But, um, see, loving learning, mm-hmm. loving learning. Yeah. I really, yeah. Outside of like, and another just point to that is that when I was outside of school, I was really excelling in dance yeah. and yes. going to these courses and doing these weekend yes. things. And I really think that, um, I wish there was more flexibility within school. One million that. percent. I mean, you that's know? my whole philosophy is that you definitely have to have a base. And so I understand. Yeah. And and we aren't close enough to elementary because we're mostly high school right now, about to launch right. middle school. Yeah. Um, but I do believe there's an elementary base that needs to be established. But mm-hmm. I would really say you know, when you get to high school, if you know you hate a subject, don't have to take it. Like, for instance, I hated that science growing up. But yeah. maybe like you, like I, you love psychology, take two psychology courses. Right. Yeah. Like if you know you for sure have no interest in pursuing a career in that field ever, we should not be forcing kids past a certain age, of course, wow, to serve proficiency yeah. and let them take more classes they love and making that more collegiate with how they pick courses. And yeah. I think about it with you, like what if you could have done more acting and dance classes in high school? Did you get any dancing or acting classes in high school? Well, so that was one thing that I kind of wish I did. I wish I involved myself more in community theater or the high oh, school. Oh, so you didn't even program. do the theater? No, I didn't do that. I was more of like the um, the dancer for school. So like Very when cool. we did prep rallies and stuff, I would always dance. When we had talent shows, I would always dance. And I had done that. And it was kind of, you know, for my mom, it was a m- m- memorable thing. Like, beautiful. So I would do that because she put me in my first yep. talent sh- show. So then I would all the way through, I did talent shows, so everybody knew it was coming every year. What type me. of dance was your favorite? I excelled at lyrical and hip hop. Oh, nice! Yeah, I love hip hop. You and <laughs> you and Soren do a lot of dancing. Soren, I mean, kind of like I like to go out and dance. That's like, why that's I know. Like that's my thing to do. Yeah, yeah. and I'll like get carried away and just like. What's your favorite I, dance I know club people, in LA? Like, stare at me. Oh, I don't. I don't go to dance clubs here. Oh, no. Just in Berlin, you know. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah, actually, let's talk about that a little bit. So, you really are very worldly. You spent a lot of time in London, right? Because of Vikings. And this is. And Ireland. Ireland, it was filmed. Ireland. Yeah. And so, would you you be shooting in Ireland and then for fun go to London and. Yeah, that's exactly. And I have a a close friend there. So, I try to go like once a year. I notice you go there a lot in London. Yeah, beautiful. So, now she's spending a lot of time in Berlin because her partner. Tell us more about Berlin. One, for those listening out here, because we have a lot of tech listeners, incredible tech hub. Yeah. Uh, you would almost it's argue crazy. it's the best technology city in Europe. Now, yeah. obviously, that's up for debate between Berlin, mm-hmm. London, Amsterdam, mm-hmm. and Paris. But it seems like Berlin has had the most success over the last five years. Mm-hmm. So super excited about that. But There's lots of tech in Ireland, too. There is. Yeah, yeah. no, it's getting bigger. Yeah. But what, what was yeah. it like Berlin socially, like living there as an expat? Like, talk mm-hmm. about a lot of our listeners be interested in living mm-hmm. abroad. What was that like? I think if you have a chance to live abroad, you really should do it. And I think acting is so great for that because I can go anywhere. I know anytime. you're so lucky. Yeah, it's really awesome. But um, it's a, it's it's a different culture for sure. 
I don't think I was culture shocked. I think that there was a few techno kind of scenes where I was culture shocked a little bit. But I like I like to be open and I think it's good to be open and, you know, not fear things and just try things out. So, you know, like we he took me around Berlin and we kind of got in involved in that kind of scene. And then also too, like this might be funny, but for the listeners, but in Germany, like the other culture shock was like spas and saunas in Germany and being completely naked with everybody like that. Was Men like, and women. Me- yeah. Everyone together. And wow. so they, Definitely in America, in <laughs> yeah, in North America, they really like, we're, we sexualize a lot of things. And where I found in Europe and Germany, it's not, it's a non-sexual thing. So I was like really blown away by that. Um, and I immersed myself being an artist. I was like, I have to get comfortable. <laughs> it's just kind of but I thought that was so cool. And the more I did it, the more I felt comfortable. And like, you know, my boyfriend's like, ah, it's nothing. I grew up like this. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's a much you know, more like, open culture. It's you so say? much more open and yeah. less and, judgmental. And it's way less judgmental. It's they're very blunt. They're in a nice, polite way. The Germans have like they love rules. They have a lot yep. of manners. And so I found like. You know, like it was it, they're really inclusive, like they always have this brunch and they bring they bring things and it's like always this potluck kind of deal there. And, um, you know, open outdoor like you go to the um, you know, you go for picnics and go to parks and um, you I don't know. It's just like a lot of brunching and a lot of markets. And I just really like it. a lot of walking, which oh, we I don't know. get I here. I love walking and biking. I, mean, I was yeah. you ride the line bikes at all there. Electric I bikes, did. they're fun. I, I did, yeah. No, you're I making did. me want to go back. So yes, what, were your two yes, fav- what were your two favorite places in Berlin? My two? For going okay. out. For going out. Um, Sissy Foss. Sissy Foss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good place. I love Sissy Foss. And I liked, um, you know, I did like Berkheim. I did like it. You do feel cool when you get in there. Yeah, you feel so cool <laughs> because it's a 90% rejection yeah, rate. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Elon Musk got rejected so oh wow really yeah and i was like they're big burly like german like bald men how many guys did you, yeah yeah i so, just went with you you can only go like a couple so if yeah, you're in, if you're i went ones, in with three me and two yeah. other folks yeah. and we literally were so <laughs> elated of getting in <laughs> yeah you feel like a rock star you really you know? do yeah but i just stood there and i'm like don't smile with yep, your you teeth. can't you gotta act yeah, like you I'm don't like, care i just try to look cool and not say a word so they know that i'm not german and i just went and then no. they let me in because if I smile with my teeth, I look too cute, you know. So. <laughs> Shout out Europe. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I'm cute, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Feel free. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> when you talk about to yeah. the German social culture, which you, oh wait, yeah. you're a Soho member, so did you go yeah. there as well? Oh yeah, I spent so a lot beautiful. of time there. So the rooftops, Soho. amazing. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah, so it's awesome. Yeah. How did you and your boyfriend meet? <sighs> well, I'm a surfer here in you are California. I, um, yeah, I began Oh, so you met here. Yeah, we met here. Wow. Yeah, through, uh, like, so I have a little Transatlantic story here. Watch (laughs) out. Here we go. It's funny how those, that happens, right? Canadian and German meet in Los Angeles, that whole thing. But, um, I have like a little, like, oddly enough, I have this little group in Venice where we go out and surf and I was surfing like heavily, like 6 a.m. every morning for like three months a couple of years ago. And I just, so I built this community and we'd go out for lunch or, you know, brunch afterwards and coffee. And we really got to know each other. So um, I used to go with this couple all the time. And they said that they had this friend, Zurin, coming. Um, and he comes around Burning Man, right? Because he's been 11 times. Oh, it makes come. more sense. And yes. He, yes. And he has, you know, with his tech company as well. He has investors yes. in Wait, was this just a year ago? That's it? This, yeah. So we just celebrated our one year. Congratulations. One year. Yeah. And so he was trying to drag me out to Burning Man last year. And I'm so glad I said no. That that would have been a little too fast. I think so, too. I don't think we would have survived because the spontaneity of it, I don't think you can do for this type of. It's like radical self-reliance. Yeah, you're intentional. Yeah, you have to be very intentional and prepared and all this stuff. So. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm glad how it's all manifested and worked out, but, um, yeah. And so I think our, our little, you know, one year hurrah is going to Burning Man together, but yeah, we, we got introduced and then I guess the rest is history. He came back after Burning Man last year and he was like, oh, I, ha- I, I, you know, I was floating. I've been nomadic for a long time. And so he, um, he's like, oh, you can stay in my Airbnb. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, no problem. 
Little did I know he had extended it so because he knew I needed a place yep. to stay. So we could, you know, and over those <laughs> over the course of those two weeks, we really got to know each other. Like he came back to from Burning Man. We made pizza, like homemade pizza oh, that's together. Fun, yeah. And um then he invited me to Berlin and yeah. That is so cool. I love yeah. your nomadic spirit. It's really exciting. So let's touch on <laughs> yeah. your career now. Let's yeah, sure. then you you know, yes. you've done so many projects so far. Yeah. You know, I was really sad I didn't get to see the movie in theaters last year. But next release, I'm going. Um, talk about the difference between filming a film versus a television show. Like, what what do you like better? Mm. How how much work is it? Like, are you working all day? You know, how are the yeah. breaks? You know, how long does it take to do the makeup before? Like, all these listeners yeah. out here were so fascinated by film. How do you get ready for a feature film? Well, they're both completely different. Um, and it depends where you're in the lineup on the show versus the film. So, um you know, just so for example, on Vikings, like I did have a lot of time, a lot of like wait, wait and sit and wait, so to speak. Um, Vikings, I was in the makeup chair for a really long time because I have tattoos. So you have to cover them up and they takes. Oh, like, really? It takes so, ages. Yeah. I think I'm going to laser them off finally yeah. just because it's just oh, it takes easier that much on time, everybody. Even like the finger tattoos. They yeah. And there? they have to keep, you know, blotting them and make sure they're, you know, they're covered all wow, day. So, really so it's a lot it. of work yeah. that my makeup artists <laughs> have to do for me. Um, cause they're, you know, they're everywhere, but, uh, and I advise not to get them if you want to act. So you heard, she yeah. said, don't do it. This isn't yeah. some preachy Unless boomer can... saying it. This is a yeah. young yeah. actress saying, don't <laughs> yeah. get tattooed. That's yeah. on her though. That's yeah. Her Unless you can hide them really nicely or you have good quality. Or if you're not acting and you don't need to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My brother's like fully covered. So, See? It's, you know, you're getting all the things on the show. Um, and then a movie like, you know, for instance, half sisters, like I was, there was two leads. And, yeah, you're like, the lead. Hey, um, Sydney, um, Wimbush, and myself. And so um, it just depends. Like, it, it's really kind of a loaded question because you could, you know, if you are the lead, you have so much to prep for. You're in the makeup chair. You're, you know, they're calling you to set right away. Um, you're working, you know, strenuous long days, depending what it was. And, you know, because it was a horror film, we were, you know, in every single scene. It was just us two most of the time. There was a little bit of breaks and things, but it was always like, okay, what's next? Let's get, let's dial up the next scene and f look through my notes. What's the most takes you've ever done on a scene? Most takes? I'm a one take wonder. Wow. <laughs> okay, I love it. Let's go. Um, time is money. And I think on set, like they don't waste too much time on doing too many rep repetitious takes, you know? So they, they sometimes, you know, in a wide shot, they'll get one and done. Oh, I love that. And That's so you best. have to be prepped and prepared, you know? Because sometimes I'm like, damn, I could have done that better. If I just looked this way a little bit more, everything would have been okay. But um, so, yeah, you have to be like, you know, on focused all the time and on, on and ready to go. But um, I, uh, I think maybe there was a time, I don't know, there must have been a time where I've done like 10 takes or something or had been in a scene where someone was, you know, doing a monologue and messing up or something. So it was taking like, you know, an hour and we're all like. Oh, it makes you, yeah. you get, so you but get, uh, when okay. you're cold, it's harder to go. So <laughs> yeah. how many people are probably, do you have an agent, a manager? Like what's that situation yeah. like? I have a whole team of people and then they have teams of people <laughs> and then everybody's, you know, in threads of emails and all these things like, you know, CCBC, like it goes yeah, down yeah, the yeah. list. Um, but I have a Canadian agent and then I have my managers here in Los Angeles and my, um, agent here in Los Angeles. So what does the Canadian agent do differently than the American agent? Really nothing. I think it's just regional. It's just oh, okay. kind of like, okay. and then they work together, and then oh, they so they're of on the same team. team. Yeah, yeah, they're on the same team. Everybody like chats, and you know, there. I I think there's like at least eight people on my team. So do they so, do all the like sourcing of jobs for you? Do you not? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that so, happens, like, what's yeah. that like? Do you just say, hey, this is the type of projects I'm willing to do. Go find it, or like, no, is they it more... they they submit you, and then you go. Oh, and they tell you, I'm going to pass on. Oh that wow! Mm -hmm. Oh, it's after yeah. the fact. It's How much the do they fact. get angry We're... at with you when you don't want to do something? No, no, never, never, yeah. never, never. Oh, no, it's good relationship. No, you guys sometimes have. they'll push you in the right direction. You know, sometimes you get super loaded with auditions. Like I had, like you know, you get like one on Monday, and then you get two on Tuesday, and then you're trying to get the one done from Monday on the due date for Wednesday and then you get four more and it's just like a busy time. So you have to prioritize sometimes and I'll just pass on them and then they'll be like, well, no, I think you should really tape for this one. I think this one you could win. So I'm like, Where are okay, the additions typically? Are they in the valley? Self-tape. 
Oh, that's easier yep. then. That's and better. And after COVID, it's all been self tapes. That's and I, so much better. I do really love going in the room. Yeah, it's true. In person, you know? I mean, we're yeah. an in person company for that reason. We love in person work. Yeah, I just think that there's more. Like you, you can sell you yourself more. Yeah, you get I to agree. know people, and in person is is such more like it's there's intimacy there you know so I a million percent agree in person is the way and that's why i always advise all young people work in person as much as you can and yeah. even this like us hanging out together in person on the podcast yeah. we don't Some do energy. we don't do any virtual podcasts we only you have to come to la and do the podcast here. here yeah what do you think of the setup I love this setup. Yeah, and shout, shout out, out to, to the listeners. Holly. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christy <laughs> was uh, our is was but is our acting instructor. So she was yeah. such a great teacher for us and a meal learning when it was called highmeal.com. Now we're subject.com and mm -hmm. the acting class lives on and you've helped so many students that way. Oh. What would you say if you were to be able to speak back to your high school self that you yeah. would have said, hey, Christy of 16 years old, don't be so hard on yourself. You should do yeah. this more. What would you say if you could speak to your high school self? Yeah, I would. I think, you know, I, I, I would probably have just, you know, surrounded myself more in the art community, um, taken those summer camp classes that my parents were pushing me to do. And then also, you know, like actors have therapy and therapists and all this stuff. And I wish I had gotten into therapy a little Earlier. bit sooner. Yeah. And I think so when powerful. You're, Take care of your mental health above all else. Every listener yeah, knows that. Yeah, and I think it's a pro, it's a progress a process, right? So, like you have to you have to go up the ladder, so to speak, within your career. And they say it takes thirty years to build your career as an I actor. Agree. Um, I agree. That's so so specifically to an actor, thirty years. Yeah. And so, when did you get your first IMDb DB credit? I was sixteen. Oh, so, it's good. Wow, well, you're yeah. on your way. So you're twenty yeah. years in. Yeah, I know. I know. And. I, I think back then, like, I had a little coach and I had some mentors, but I think, like, you know, I always tell people to find someone they aspire to and find somebody that's wise and have a mentor. And I, I had a lot of fear and I didn't have a lot of self-confidence then. And I think when you're a teenager, like 13 to 18, like you're still kind of, you know, winging it and you're trying to find yourself. And um, a lot about acting is being brave and overcoming those things and being okay in your body. And I think it, it was great that I had dance, but um, I hadn't found my voice yet. So a lot of like, you know, everyone says, oh, you're not, you know, acting is not about your voice, it's about the writers. And I disagree. I think it's like, a, it's a collaboration. And if you haven't had your voice, if you don't have your confidence in your own voice, then you're not be gonna be able to tell the story properly, right? So it's collaborative and I think that, um, you know, just one simple thing, like I lost three years of school growing up because my mom was sick, right? Mm -hmm. And I lost a lot of self-confidence that from school and it intimidated me because I, you know, trauma brain and stuff, I was so unfocused. So I think there, it, there's, it, it's a it's a process. And I, and I think kids have a lot of trauma and I think there's lots of bullying and it's like it's so hard. Even more today than ever before yeah, on social media. Could, exactly, and I couldn't imagine so I think having someone, one, you could look up to and go to, you know, I had like a grade five teacher that became friends with me and a mentor and we still talk to this day, you know, and like love her. And she was amazing, um, helped me after school with, you know, took time like on her own free will to help me with my reading and math skills. So I think like, you know, as a storyteller, as an actress, um, you'll want to make sure that you know how to articulate and read out loud, practice out loud, you know, that's something I wish I did. I wish I read more scripts and understood those plays, um, got into summer camps and theater stuff and all of that kind of thing. And then found that community where I could just be free in myself and be rewarded for that. Because, you know, back to being in LA, I go to acting class and that's like my time to be a complete idiot. Like So fun and freeing. Yeah. And, you know, when at home, my family loves me. I'm the neurotic one in the family like they're like you're a little psycho <laughs> and you know like that's okay but i i had the first the first time being in los angeles and it doesn't even need to be here it just needs to be like in your community of people where they just get you and they understand you and you can have this like vulnerability and be able to fall on your face and someone just you know be able to pick you back up and be like don't worry i'm going to do that next week in class you know so I think there's a lot of like, you know, you have to overcome a lot. And I see this with even uh, like it's not even just teenagers. It's it's adult actors who haven't got 
through those steps with themselves. They're they're too timid or shy to like show that side of themselves, whether it be it's like an array of emotions, yeah. right? So you have to be able to do those things and be unapologetic in them, and um, and then just go for it and don't look back. Just like try stuff, you know, like be brave and courageous and just go for it because it, what do you have to lose? Yeah, no, you know? I, I completely agree. I think even, you know, I've noticed in my own personal life, being a founder, entrepreneur, you know, over time, it's harder to relate to certain friends that were are incredible friends, but they're yeah. not going through the same things, uh, the same pressures, the same stresses. And that's just how life is in general. And, and, you know, I can totally relate in terms of, you know, you love your acting community because they can yeah. connect with you on an emotional level, on a professional level and really provide those supports. And, it's yeah. so important to find your people where you can make mistakes, where you can yeah. let your vulnerable dark self out and they can help coach and correct you accordingly yeah. in a yeah. safe space. And so yeah. I, I absolutely love that. I totally agree. And you know, that's why, uh, you know, I've always been so attracted to your positivity, but definitely want to meet your partner because he's yeah. probably going through similar things that yeah, I'm going through. You guys through. should have him on the podcast. We should. Great idea. I love it. Okay. <laughs> and also too, just to touch back, um, set is a community. Yeah. So that's like, you know, the, we were talking about film versus, community. versus, you know, um, TV. TV and TV. Like we had like those two year like and it's so sad when you leave because you build yeah, a family. Exactly. And then you're, you they're know? done. They're out of your life. Yeah. I would rather do a film sometimes so I can like because I get so you can disconnect. Yeah. Like, yeah, I love. No, I everybody. feel that even here, like this company and everything has given yeah. me so much. And, you know, yeah. it's everything to me. And. Yeah. Uh, you know, being in the arena with these teammates is really special and it's a joy. And and that's the social release that, you know, my wife and I are lucky mm -hmm. enough to get on a daily basis. That on the weekends, we just like to lay low because yeah. we don't need any socialization. This yeah. is the social release. You, get, you guys are lucky to have that. It's it's hard to build that. And I and I, you guys are both great people. So you found amazing people and the success is growing. Success is continuing. <laughs> and so we got to thank one person especially extra for this and that's christy don Dinsmore, <laughs> the investor we didn't announce that oh, in the beginning yeah. <laughs> she's also an investor in this company so <laughs> yeah. she's liking what you're seeing uh an instructor and now the podcast peddler by getting her boyfriend to come Woo! on look at ASAP. me though thank and you. i was just gonna say one thing yeah. your the course that i did was intimidating it was and i learned so but you much helped from so many kids it. yeah you've helped at least I, I would love, we should fact check these numbers, but you've helped at least 10,000 kids. And that's oh, pretty special. Really? That's amazing. Think about how many kids are better off and maybe, that's amazing. The, maybe they want to explore acting because of you. And yeah. so shout out to Christy Dawn Dinsmore. Yes. Another incredible episode of On the Subject. I'm your host, Michael Florida. Please click like and subscribe down below. We're really trying to push Spotify and YouTube. Like, subscribe, help grow the podcast so we can get more incredible guests like Christy soon. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha.